In this one, we're going to be looking at reconnaissance from the perspective of a red teamer. And a lot of times, especially in these red team engagements, or even if you're a pen tester that is um, working for a consulting firm, a lot of times you're going to be starting with limited to no knowledge of the uh, the client and their environment. So you're going to have to do a lot of these uh, recon tactics from the outside, right? So talking about passive recon, active recon. What I do personally is I work on an internal security team uh, for a company, not a consulting firm. And so I don't really have to do as much of the passive recon and these external um, reconnaissance tactics, but they're very good to, uh, to be aware of. And even if you do work on an internal security team, you can apply these techniques in order to find stuff that maybe your company isn't even aware of that they might be leaking. So definitely really good information to know regardless. And on red team engagements, you need to do a little of this OSINT, right? Uh, it can really help you gain initial access if you're having to fish your way in or something like that. Now, the first thing is um, with the introduction here, these are the topics that we're going to be covering as you see on the screen here. And they start off with uh, going over the taxonomy of reconnaissance. So explaining that basically you have passive recon and active recon. Now the main difference is in active recon, you're actively sending packets basically to the target or, you know, some resources that they own. Whereas with passive recon, you are not actively interacting with it. You will be act interacting with services and things that um, have already gathered this data for you. So you're not directly making any, you know, sending any data to the client, right? And when I say data, I could mean as little as going to their website, right? If you go to the website of your target, you are leaving an artifact, right? You are doing active recon at that point because you're sending HTTP requests to the target. So by definition, that would be active recon. Whereas looking at uh, something like a Whois record or a Google search of um, maybe another site that collected data on them, right? That would be passive recon. Like if you go to the Wayback Machine or whatever, and you look at um, archives, internet archives, that would be passive recon because you wouldn't be directly sending data to the site. Now, the other classification is external recon versus internal recon, right? So for uh, fairly straightforward here, external is just conducted outside the target's network, focuses on externally facing uh, assets, of, and it focuses on externally facing assets accessible from the internet, whereas the internal recon will be uh, physically located inside the company building, for example, or inside their target network. So the their assets that are not internet facing, essentially. Now let's take a look at some of the built-in tools. Who is Dig, Tracer, Traceroute uh, is what they focus on here. Uh, so who is can be used to get gather uh, DNS data uh, whenever their site was registered, right? So you can actually get a pretty good amount of useful data here. So down to like locations, names of whoever registered it, their email address, their phone number in some cases, <clears throat> especially if they didn't um, pay for privacy, right? So you can withhold it by whenever you register your, your name server is to, um, you can apply privacy to it where it's not going to leak this info. Uh, but if they don't do that, then you can actually gather this publicly available through who, who is. You can also do some uh, DNS recon with dig, NS lookup, and host, and you can use a command line utility like traceroute to see uh, the, basically trace your packet across the internet and see what hops it makes and how it gets to the, uh, to the target. So just to look at dig here, you see some A records. Um, you see how this resolves. And then host, you can see the IP addresses for a host name, right? So there's two different uh, IPv4 addresses, two different IPv6 addresses in this case. Trace route, you can trace your packets uh, route all the way to the target here. You can see all the network hops that happen. And then for advanced searching, this is where we get into some uh, basically Google dorking. So how to be even more efficient with Google because Google 
is an extremely important skill. Uh, or using whatever search engine, even if you prefer, like, say, DuckDuckGo or something like that. Knowing how to get the most out of that is critical. So going beyond just the normal standard way most people search, uh, you can enclose your search term in quotes, and that will search for that exact phrase. So not something similar, but that exact search phrase. One way that I use this pretty actively is if I'm searching for a vulnerability for a particular version of a software, or if I'm searching on a specific CVE, most of the time I'm going to enclose those in quotes because I don't want a CVE that is close to that in the number, but is off by like one or two, because that'd be an entirely different CVE. So instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually enclose it in quotes and that's going to allow me to get the search results that relate to that specific CVE, not ones that just kind of look similar. Right. And then of course, you can search for file types and stuff, so you maybe can find some sensitive data in these files. Um, you know, you can search for a, a sensitive keyword here on that specific site, uh, or excluding that site. Search for stuff in the title, in the URL, etc. Right? And these are the different some of the different file types you can search on. And there's this Google hacking database, which is very useful. And DuckDuckGo has slightly different syntax, I believe. So we could take a look at that in the documentation here. And you can see a lot of the stuff does appear to be the same. But I'm sure there are slight differences. You could check out if you use DuckDuckGo. And then the Google hacking database is extremely handy as well. It's a database of very commonly used uh, Google dorks to help you find sensitive information. So you see stuff like finding admin pages and things like that. And there's 500 pages of this stuff. So a ton of different things to, to try out as needed. Yeah. And so this was a, a section that I found really handy here. You have, um, it kind of categorizes the Google dorks by what they can provide for you. Right. So footholds, this could be useful for footholds. This could be useful for files containing usernames, right? They have a contacts text file or something like that. Sensitive directories, web server detection. You can, obviously these are kind of targeted specific to a certain thing, but you can easily modify this for whatever you're looking for, right? So in this case, web server detection, this particular search uh, string here is going to try to detect Glassfish servers. But if we wanted to detect, for example, Apache servers, we change this to Apache, right? Look for that in the title or whatever the default is for Apache 2. We can look for that as well. So we can adapt this to whatever we're looking for, right? Similarly here, this one was looking for SolarWinds Orion Core. We could actually change that to uh, whatever known vulnerability we're looking for on that particular site or whatever target site, uh, well, excluding that site in this case, right? So we could pretty much adapt this to whatever we're trying to do. But I like how they give you these broad categories here. So social media, definitely not something you want to overlook. Same with job ads, because you can find some pretty sensitive information there. This is Again, all this stuff is very, getting into OSINT here, you know, obviously people that are part of different companies might post some sensitive information on their social media, whether it's related to their accounts, you know, the mother's maiden name and stuff like that that could assist you in um, getting their, you know, password reset or something like that. But also finding out that they work for that company could be good reconnaissance as well, because if you can either guess the email structure that that company uses or look it up on something like hunter.io, then uh, that could be very useful in, uh, especially once you get in the network to know that that's a valid account, right? And you could do password spray attacks, all kinds of stuff. I mean, there's so many potential uh, things you can find from social media that could be useful for you. And uh, similar thing with, uh, with job ads as well. And so now getting into some specialized search engines, uh, there's paid you know, premium services that can aggregate a bunch of this search data together and just be a time saver. So something like this, view DNS.info. You see I have a nice graphical interface here and it kind of pulls together multiple commands. But ultimately, a lot of this stuff you could do manually as well. 
Now, there's also things like this threat intelligence platform where it will go a step further and actually do some malware checks as well as the Whois and DNS queries for you. It's another option that you have. And then, you know, like Census, which can provide its own set of unique information to you as well. And one thing they mentioned in this is a lot of times nowadays, people are using what is known as shared hosting. So uh, if you use something like uh, Bluehost, a hosting provider like Bluehost or HostGator, et cetera, you could you know, pay less if you don't have to use a ton of resources. And you can share that server, share that IP address with other businesses that have websites. You know, you're all using that same physical server or virtual machine, right? The same IP address for your multiple sites. So that IP address, it might be out of scope because um, you might be actually looking for vulnerabilities on another client, basically, right? there's multiple websites that are running on these shared hosts. So it's really easy to, in that case, start working on things that are out of scope. So just something to consider. And you can use one of these tools to see what other sites are hosted on that IP address. And then Shodan is another very handy uh, search engine where you can actually search for, it's basically Google, but for um, protocol, other protocols, right? Other than HTTP. So, you can look up IP addresses and get this information as well, like the DNS stuff. I mean, there's so much stuff that you can look up on Shodan. I think they have their own Shodan rooms within, yeah, they do within Try Hack Me. So we won't get fully into that. It's a whole nother rabbit hole, but just know that it's basically like a search engine for these different protocols in the internet, right? So one thing that you can do is search on IP address and get some information back uh, like that. And there's a whole documentation page that they reference for the CLI component. So you can take a look at that and uh, yeah, you can see some of the different options that are available here. I mean, there's way more that you can do with Shodan, but here's some of the CLI things you can do. And then here's some tools for Recon. Recon NG. Um, I don't use this one too much, but uh, yeah, let me know in the comment section if this is something you actively use. I'd like to know. But essentially, the way I view this is kind of like Metasploit, but specifically focused on Recon. So you can <clears throat> access a bunch of reconnaissance modules that will do things like Google dorking for you or whatever the module that you're using does. And you can actually aggregate all that into a database so you can access that later and just have all that information super handy for you. Um, so here's an example of them um, inserting stuff into the database. You can search the marketplace for different modules you can use. Some of them require keys, like if they're a premium service, like Census here requires a key, which is probably going to be a paid license. And some of them require dependencies in order to work. There's all kinds of stuff it can do. I'll just walk you through what they had us do in this room here, which is to look up some stuff. So how do you start Recon NG with the Workspace Clinic Red Team? Well, to start something up with a workspace, you would just do Recon NG, tack W, and then the name of the workspace. So let's just drop into Kali here. And we can do this command here, and that will start us up in this workspace as we see here. Pretty straightforward. So next thing we want to do is how many modules uh, with the name virus total exists. So we're going to use that marketplace command. Uh, marketplace search virus total is what we want. So marketplace search virus total. And we see there are two. And then there's a single module under host uh, tag domains, what is its name? So in order to find that, we'll just instead search on hosts tag domain. And this is the, the one here. Uh, it's called migrate hosts. And census email address is a module that retrieves email addresses from the TLS certificates for a company who is the author well, let's go ahead and start by searching on that in the marketplace. And then once we have that, we can just grab this path here. 
And we might not actually need the path, I wonder. Let's see. Let's try without the path. Marketplace info is the command we're looking for. Yeah. So that's good. Marketplace info, census email address, and you see the author is census team. So pretty simple there. And then after that, they move on to Multigo, which there's a community version, but a lot of the power of this comes from the paid versions. Uh, again, not something that I actively use, but again, I would like to know. This is something that you guys use as red teamers. Uh, let me know in the comments section below. They have these transforms. Basically, the way you can view this is a uh, blending mind mapping with OSINT. It's a tool that basically can be really useful for OSINT and it utilizes that kind of mind map format. You do these things called transforms where you can run, you know, you can figure out IP addresses and then from there you can run another transform to get host names or that's just one example, right? There's a ton of different commands and things you can do off of that that will generate these mind maps and really help you visually map out this stuff. There's a ton of different uh, transforms that you can use. A lot of the good ones, it seems, are uh, are premium ones and paid ones, right? And uh, yeah, that's pretty much all of the tools that it covers here in this Red Team Recon Room. Definitely focusing a lot on that external reconnaissance, which is the very first step um, once you actually get started on the Red Team engagement after all the, the paperwork is done and you are cut loose on that engagement from an external perspective this is where you would start out. So yeah, hopefully this was helpful to you. If you want to get caught up on the series, add that video or all of those videos really on the screen for you right now. And definitely let me know if you have any questions down in the comment section below and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.